everybody, my name is Andrew, this is Kite Army, and yes, you are in the new Kite Army studio, right here. What's old is new, sort of the same background, just I added my decorative touch. Anyway, today what I want to talk to you about is surveillance systems. All right, so why do you need a security camera system? Well, there's a bunch of reasons, but recently there's been a slew of theft of packages being delivered to homes. They're called porch pirates. These guys, they drive around, look for a package sitting on a porch, jump out of their car, grab it, and they're gone, and you're out of luck. So one of these security systems uh, could protect you from those kind of problems. They basically would send you a notification as soon as they saw any activity on those porches, and you can keep an eye on things. Also, if you're traveling, you're on vacation, business, whatever it might be, these systems let you connect remotely to these DVRs, and you can make sure that everything's, you know, that your house isn't getting flooded, it's not getting, you know, you don't have any theft going on, any damage, whatever it might be. They'll just give you peace of mind in that way. These systems have come down way down in price and they're really affordable. They're not difficult to install. They're easy to set up. They give you lots of options. But anyway, hopefully at the end of this video, I'll give you enough information you can, so you can decide whether one of these security systems makes sense to protect your home. It's gonna be insane. I have two surveillance systems right here. They're both around $200. One's just a little shy, one's just a little above. So we're gonna split the difference and call it $200. What I want to do today with you is see if a $200 surveillance system is really going to cut it. So today we're going to be talking about two different solutions. Here's one. This is the Swan. Uh, this is the Professional HD. It's 1080p is the re resolution and it's a one terabyte system. That's this guy right here. The other one that I'm looking at, which was 199, I believe, or 190, is this guy right here. It's an Easy Viz. This is a one terabyte as well. It includes four cameras. It's capable of supporting four, whereas a Swan can support eight. Now, um, the difference in this guy is it's actually a three megapixel camera, where the Swan is a 1080. All right, let's take a quick look at the cameras that both of these systems include. Let's start with the Swan, this guy right over here. The Swan comes with four of these cameras. They are HD 1080p cameras. Uh, they have night vision and the camera is actually encased in a metal case. So that's going to be really rugged for an outdoor application. Let's move over to the Easy Viz. This is supposedly a three megapixel camera. So the, the video quality on the Easy Viz should be better than the Swan video. Uh, the camera case is plastic, but it's rugged enough. It's IP66 rated, just like the Swan. Uh, it does have night vision as well, and it's got all the articulation uh, that the Swan has for installation. The only thing I want to point out is both of these cameras are analog, meaning they require a coax connection to each camera and the power to each camera. So if you're going to install these, you need to make sure you have enough power to support all your cameras. So both the Easy Viz and the Swan systems are sold with IP66 cameras. What that means in lay terms is they're supposed to be waterproof. This is probably going to jeopardize your warranty, but it's never stopped me before. Here we go. Dive, dive, dive. We are now. Translation underwater. Let's see what life looks like underwater. Let's pull the cameras out and see if they uh, look damaged at all. Yeah, this one's got a little bit of water. The Easy Viz looks like no water. So if you get that much water, you're in trouble with the Swan. The Easy Viz, it looked like it uh, survived the water test. Next stop. All right, so we just looked at the cameras between these two systems. Now let's look at the brains of both of these systems. First of all, here's the Swan DVR right here, and here's the Easy Viz. Let's start by talking about the similarities between these two systems. First off, they both have a one terabyte hard drive installed. That will give you between 10 to 30 days of recording. Now that number depends on the amount of cameras you have and the quality you're recording at. 
All right, so both of these systems, you can do all the configuration, all the video configuration, anything you need to be done when you're in console mode, meaning when you've got a monitor plugged directly into your DVR and you're sitting in front of it with a mouse. Now, for some of us that may not be convenient, you might want to access these on your LAN or on the internet. So the way they've addressed that need is, of course, each one of these boxes has an ethernet port on it. It needs to be configured on your network. Once you do that, there's software for a Mac and PC, as well as iOS, Apple, and Android. Now, on the software side of it, it's a little bit more limited than it would be when you're in console mode, but for most of us, you can do all the viewing of the video, you can set up a recording, and that's what most people are gonna wanna do when they're not on the property. One of the features on the EasyViz system that I really liked was the motion detection setup. You can see here they have the view that the camera has, and when I put my hand on it, it's showing you a display of where to text that motion. If you've got your camera set towards a tree with leaves on it that are rustling around all the time, you can lower the sensitivity right here and you're gonna see when I put my hand in front of it, it actually doesn't detect the motion as quickly as it would when I put it to the maximum side right here. It takes a second to apply that. You can see the red indicates where the system is seeing motion. The other thing that I want to point out about the EasyViz system is the interface is real simple. There's not much to it. Here's the configuration, and it kind of steps you through all the settings. Here's your brightness, your contrast, all your adjustments to your camera, your motion detection, your privacy mask that just says, hey, here's an area that I don't want to see anything on. Um, and if you need more than that, you can go to the advanced settings. Here's what the SWAN configuration page looks like in contrast to the EasyViz. I think it's a little bit more intimidating. Uh, here's the search uh, menu, some of the network stuff. And I think people who don't have as much comfort setting up security camera systems might find this a bit intimidating. All right, so you've hung in there a long time. You've listened to me babble about all this boring stuff. Don't we want to see what these cameras are capable of? Let's talk about that. What I did notice is the EasyViz camera, even though it's rated as a three megapixel camera, I thought the quality and the artifacts that I've seen in the output were not as good as the Swan camera that's supposed to be a 1080p camera. You can probably see that here. The other thing I wanna point out is you're gonna notice that the Swan system, which is this side right here, actually sees a wider view than the EasyViz does. Notice between the board and this guy right here that the Easy View just sees edge to edge where the Swan goes a little wider, so it's got a bigger radius on the Swan. So that's another plus for the Swan cameras. Ooh, oh, you caught me just on the way to the bathroom in the middle of the night. All right, let me talk to you about how these cameras perform in low light levels. You've got the Swan on that side and the Easy Viz right over there. Now, probably what you're seeing is me burned out on the Swan side and looking okay on the Easy Viz side. And in this little test, that's probably true, but when I tried these in different scenarios, I found that the Swan actually performed a lot better in low light levels than the Easy Viz, even though it's a 1080p camera. Both of them are okay, but for some reason the lens in the Swan system is just a little bit better and you do get a better night view on that system. All right guys, thank you for hanging in there with me. Let's give you the summary. Overall, both of these systems are pretty good. For 200 bucks, you can't go wrong. As I said, on any other platform, if it's a cloud-based platform like Nest, you're gonna spend that amount of money per year. So this is a one-time cost, put it in, you're good to go. Uh, I have to say the easy viz as far as configuration and functionality was really good, simple to set up, no bugs at all. I did have one kind of hiccup setting up the swan so that I kind of leaned towards the easy viz in that area. Now the water test, the swan camera actually failed the water test and some water got in there and the easy viz camera stayed dry. So that goes to the easy viz side. Now, the quality of the cameras, I'd have to say, even though the EasyViz is supposedly a three megapixel camera, I still prefer the Swan 1080p camera over the EasyViz, although it did leak. 
Now, most of us aren't gonna be submerging our camera, so I'm not sure if that matters. So let's cut that all down to what we care about. I'd say right now, the Swan you can buy for about 280 bucks. You can pick up the Easy Vis for 180. So if I was gonna buy one of these systems, my money right now would be on the Easy Vis. Hopefully you found this video informative. Hopefully you'll be good to me and hit that subscribe button, hit that like, maybe make a comment below. Make sure you check out all my other content and I will see you guys around real soon.